Hi, Will Schweller here to uh, walk you through some of the exciting fine art lots in Clark Auctions July 18th sale. Starting with this European school male nude, late 18th, early 19th century. Uh, a really expertly painted naturalistic representation of male nude in the back. We've got these shrouded figures here. It's a really extremely well painted piece and I think with a little bit of cleaning would really bright up, brighten up. It comes out of a uh, local New York collection with a two to three thousand dollar estimate. To its left we have one of the uh, certainly one of the highlights of the sale, this oil on canvas sort of orientalist seen by the Belgian born artist Edouard Verschefeldt. Uh, Verschefeldt fled Europe uh, during the First World War and moved to Algeria where he uh, fell in love with, with the country and culture, you know, converted to Islam, married an Algerian woman, and ended up producing a number of paintings like this um, that are just these really tender representations of Algerian life. Here we have a woman with, with a hookah that um, are known for their sort of expert use of, of paint. They're, they're almost impressionistic. Um, his works are pretty widely collected. This comes out of an important international collection, um, sort of, of a collector and dealer, and has a ten dollars to $15,000 estimate. To its left, from a New York collection, we have two works by the American illustrator Richard or Dick Sargent. Uh, this top one here on board is an advertisement for Post Cereals. Um, Sargent is, is really known for his mid-century illustrations that depict sort of an idealized suburban family. Here they're arguing over where to go for vacation, but they can agree on, uh, on their post-tens cereal. This piece has a three to five thousand dollar estimate, and this 1961 illustration, uh, you know, sketches for a cover of the Saturday Evening Post, have a thousand to fifteen hundred as their estimate. To their left, we have another one of the more important paintings in the sale. This is a work by the American artist Pearl Fine from 1967. It's titled A Celestial Sound. Fine is one of the more important, if not slightly undersung, uh, female painters of the mid 20th century. She showed in the Ninth Street Exhibition um, and was known for, for both her you know, early 40s, 50s abstract expressionist works and later pieces that here sort of anticipate minimalism. Uh, she uses a very limited palette uh, and these sort of repetitions of zigzagging forms to create an ultimately quite complex and deep painting. I really love this work um, and it's certainly something to be seen in person. The, the photographs don't do it justice. It, uh, again, like I said, comes from a New York collection and has an eight dollars to $12,000 estimate. To its left, we have a work here by Paul Reed, another mid-century American abstractionist. This is an untitled uh, acrylic on canvas, sort of geometric, almost uh, op art in, uh, in effect. It has a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar estimate. And above it we have a mixed media piece by the American artist David Carino. It's sort of like sand and latex, very textured and heavy piece from 1990, also untitled. Uh, this has Tony Schifrazi gallery labels on the back. It's being sold with a it's being sold with a four to six hundred dollar estimate. Switching veins a bit from the same collection as the, the Verschefeldt, we have this unsigned European school painting, probably 17th, 18th century, of Danae. Uh, Danae was, was the mother of Perseus, who uh, was locked away by her father in a you know, sort of windowless room, but um, caught the attention of Zeus, who came to her as a golden shower, seen here as sort of this golden mist. Uh, and, and ultimately he impregnated her and, and she gave birth to Perseus. Um, this is a pretty common subject in European painting, probably most notably done by, by Titian. Uh, and Zeus is often shown as, as a rain of gold coins or like in this painting, sort of a golden mist. This piece has a thousand to $1,500 estimate. Above it from an Upper West Side collection, we have a nice Italian 18th, 19th century oil on canvas still life of a fish and some fruit. Um, it is being sold with an eight to $1,200 estimate. I really love the way the fish is painted. Popping to the other side of the office, we have a really fantastic painting by the American artist George McNeil, known both for his abstract and slightly more figurative works. Um, this piece is titled Shifting Love. It's from 1981. And it has, uh, pardon me, it has Siba Geige, uh, corporation labels on the back, which was a, a Swiss pharmaceutical firm. It's being sold with a five to seven thousand dollar estimate. And just really masterful use of color here. I, this is kind of my favorite passage of the painting here. As we work across the gallery here, 
Up in the corner, we have three works all lauded separately by the French painter Gabriel Godard. Um, the two on the top, the small uh, one, a still life, and the other, a landscape, are being sold with five to seven hundred dollar estimates. And below it, this uh, piece here, which is titled in French, The Blue Teapot, is being sold with a six to nine hundred dollar estimate. And all three come from the same Vermont collection. To their left, we have this abstract work by the American artist Buffy Johnson. Uh, Johnson was also an important um, sort of abstract imagist painter known for her work in the 40s and 50s. This piece is titled The Bridge One from 1952. It's being sold with a three to five thousand dollar estimate. She, like Pearl Fine, is someone who in, in recent years has sort of been, you know, re-recognized as, as an important member of mid-century American painting. Above it, we have a really exciting etching by uh, European painter and artist in general, Marcel Duchamp, who uh, really needs no introduction, one of the more important artists in 20th century art, known for both his painting, his sculpture, and his more conceptual pieces. Uh, later in his career, he kind of abandoned art making, or ostensibly abandoned art making, and devoted his life to chess. And this piece from 1965 is titled The Chess Players. And we see here two figures sort of over a chessboard. The composition in a way reflects some of his earlier painting, which, which has, uh, you know, touches of cubism. This is being sold with an eight to $12,000 estimate. Popping back down, we have a rather fascinating acrylic on shaped canvas by the American artist Sidney Guberman, titled Denworth Park Six. The work's from 1969. And I think it's really, you know, an excellent uh, example of the sort of work that was being done in the late 60s. You know, the shaped canvas sort of geometric, um, almost conjuring up an image of Stella or something like that. Um, it's an excellent opportunity for a collector to, to sort of buy a really geometric late 60s piece. It's got a four to $600 estimate. It comes out of a New York collection. Above it, we have this uh, work on board by American painter Joe Stefanelli. Stefanelli, another uh, mid-century American abstract painter, uh, worked in New York. This piece is titled Tucson Painting Four. It's from the 1980s. It's been sold with a thousand to $1,500 estimate. Um, and again, it's just a very dynamic abstract painting. There's really heavy brush strokes, uh, conjure a lot of movement. To its left, hanging above the door we here, we have a nice New York scene, sort of still life painting by the American modernist Arnold Friedman. This work's coming out of a Long Island collection. I really happen to love the, uh, the handling of this tablecloth here. It's sort of how it, as it drapes over the side of the table, kind of descends into more abstraction. Uh, this work's being sold with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. To its left, we have another Stefanelli painting. This is an oil on canvas titled The Herald. Again, largely abstract. Uh, Stefanelli's incorporating text into this painting and uh, a form that to me sort of invokes the angel Gabriel. Uh, and with the title The Herald makes me think this is sort of an interpretation of Annunciation scenes. Uh, it is being sold with a $500 to $700 estimate. Below it, we have another one of the real highlights of the sale. Uh, mixed Media on Paper by Marc Chagall. This comes from a Park Avenue collection. It's from 1945 and is titled Le Perroquet, or alternatively, uh, Le Perrault, and depicts a uh, bird here, sort of amongst a field of more abstract works. This, this may well be a sketch uh, Chagall did, um, and it has French gallery labels on the back from uh, M. André Schuller Gallery, who is an important uh, you know, sort of expert in 20th century art. This being sold with a six to $9,000 estimate. Below it, we have a 1972 Peter Max acrylic on canvas of a bearded figure with angels. You know, both sort of subject matter Max returned to often in his career. What I really like about this piece uh, is that it's really indicative of his, his earlier work and that it's, it's sort of flat and featuring these bold colors. Um, you know, really goes to show why he's one of the more important uh, sort of popular artists um, associated often with the kind of like psychedelic rock scene of the late 60s and early 70s. This comes from a, a Westchester collection as a three to $5,000 estimate. To its left, we have something rather remarkably different. From the same Upper West Side collection as the Italian still life with the fish, we have this portrait of a young Queen Victoria by the Irish-born British artist Frederick Newenham. Uh, it's from 1844 uh, and depicts Victoria here holding flowers and wearing only one glove as she was often shown. Uh, she favored emeralds, and so we have this excellent bracelet here with an emerald. Um, and just, just tremendously competent portrait. I mean, the curls of her hair are really expertly painted. It's, it's a really fantastic piece. Uh, perfect for anyone interested in English portraiture or Victoriana, more broadly speaking. It's a three to $5,000 estimate. 
And the artist rarely comes to market, so it's a, an excellent opportunity for someone looking to collect a work by Newnham. Down here in the lower left corner, uh, we have this oil on panel by the French painter Edmond Joinville, who is known for his rather small, almost jewel tone like oils on panel. This is a sort of orientalist scene um, that almost transposes the kind of composition of uh, a lot of Rococo paintings, these sort of garden parties with swings, uh, reminiscent of Watteau, but into a more orientalist context. I mean, we have a sort of like a hookah down here. Uh, this comes from that same international collection as the, the Verschefeld and the painting of Danae. It's being sold with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. Above it, we have a pair, though they're lauded individually, of oils on panel by the Italian artist Luigi Cagliani, uh, who's best known for his, his landscapes of Italy um, and often works in this palette, you know, featuring a lot of grays and light blues. The really excellent little pieces come from a local New York collection. They're being sold with three dollars to $500 estimates each. Lastly, up here in this front gallery, we have an oil on canvas by the American social realist painter Raphael Sawyer, titled The you know, Woman in Red Sweater. This piece comes from a White Plains collection um, and uh, is being sold with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. What I think is particularly nice about this Sawyer, I mean, you get you know, really all the qualities that are, that are in the best Sawyers, you know, these really sympathetic portraits of women, but this is a little more accessible than some of his work in that the sitter's not nude. Um, and what's also interesting is this subject was reproduced in a lithograph, this, this woman with the red, you know, knit cap and red sweater. Um, so this is, this is one of the more exciting Sawyers I think we've handled here in the past few years. Now that we're here in the main gallery, we're going to move quickly to showcase the real breadth and depth of the sale. We've got this large political work by Jeremy Turner. We have five lots of prints by Al Hirschfeld. This is a uh, portrait of Cher. We've got an abstract work by Max Gunther, European artist. Another shaped canvas, this by William Hegelheimer. A rather large Tarque seriograph, uh, again flanked by a number of, of the Hirschfelds that I'd already mentioned. And up there we have a 2008 print by Donald Bachler. Here we have a Michael Mazur print of a Kala, sort of common subject matter for the artist. A rather large abstract by the American painter John Zinsner. And again, more, more of those Hirschfelds, sort of themes ranging from, from Hollywood to Broadway to opera. Here we have a more contemporary Israeli painting, sort of a modernist representation. I don't know if this is Moses with the, with the Ten Commandments. We have three works by the Czech painter Jindra Husari Kova, who I think uh, this work is a bit Chagall-esque, and, and we've had success selling in the past. Here we have a large abstract by Angelo Ippolito. A really bright, decorative use of greens. A piece here, sort of modernist painting by, uh, by Bob Kane. Another one of the more interesting paintings that we didn't have room for up front is this uh, Long Island scene by an uh, artist named Donahoe, G. Ruger Donahoe comes from a local Larchmont collection. I think just fantastic use of light here, sort of dappling through the trees onto the farmhouse from 1911. We have a lot of nice European paintings in the sale, including this, uh, this genre scene here, and this landscape by Liederman. I like the use of the mountains here, really reminiscent of like, sort of 17th century Dutch painting. This abstract painting here is unsigned but it's from 1974, and I think a really fantastic, quite graphic piece, sort of extrapolating machinery there. We've got two landscapes by French artist René Guigny. This is one of them here, of Red Rocks. And above it, an American scene by Charles Craig, featuring teepees. And then here we have an unsigned painting, presumably after the French artist Constant, another Orientalist scene. Here a nice 17th, maybe early 18th century Dutch school portrait of an old man. And the you know, guise of a pilgrim. And then as we pop over here, we have a collection of English portraits, including this one by Willem Verst. You know, as always, we're just really scratching the surface here. We've got about 130 fine art lots in this sale. You know, truly something for every kind of collector. So please do go to our catalog at www.clarkny.com. Before we wrap up, I'd like to uh, apologize for the rain noises here. Thank you.